So with any traditional mouse, you usually just have a left button, right button, middle mouse button, and maybe about two buttons on the side. But now, I moved on and discovered a mouse far advanced than any mouse out there. Now let me show you such a unique mouse that even after 4 years from its initial release, it remains a such a unique breed of gaming mouses in the market to this day. Here's a mouse that gives tactile feedback to your clicks, assign any key to a tilt, pivot or roll motion, access multiple keys in a single button, and has software that puts Razer Synapse and IQ to shame with its customizability. This is the Z-Mouse from SwiftPoint. Party gamers, we're here at CES. We're looking at some new mice and technology for LAN parties coming up in 2017 and beyond. I'm here with Sam, and he's going to show us this really cool mouse. Sam? Hey, everyone. It's Grant here from SwiftPoint. First off, a huge thank you to you all for the amazing support raising over half a million dollars in funds to make the Z a reality. It's been incredible. Allow me to give a brief summary of the Z's history because of how underground and niche this product is, considering I'd say for now only a couple thousand know of this company. So back in 2016, after more than three years of development, a small New Zealand company called SwiftPoint released a Kickstarter to raise funds for what they would call the Z, the most advanced gaming mouse ever made. And this mouse would be a built-in gyroscope, access to a multitude of buttons with a force sensor, assign buttons or analog controls to pivot and tilt, and provide tactile feedback with an accelerometer. And in the end, they succeeded, raising over half a million dollars and later releasing it worldwide in 2017, going on to win the Best Gaming Innovation Award in 2017. And rightfully so, because to this day, it still stands as a one-of-its-kind mouse, with some features that I have yet to see in other modern gaming mouses. Because the only kinds of mouses I'm seeing in 2021 and through late 2020 can be summed up in three words. Lightweight, wireless, RGB. That's it. However, I will add that this mouse is patented by SwiftPoint. Now, although not the main focus of this video, I would also like to add that in October of 2020, they opened up a Kickstarter to share a project which they called the Tracer, Premium Gaming Mouse Play Different, to offer up what is essentially a more affordable and streamlined version of the Z, with some features absent that were on the Z like the gyroscope, tactile feedback, the OLED screen, pivot and tilt gestures, and replaceable mouse feet. So, offering a mouse specifically targeted towards gamers. However, additionally, alongside the Tracer's introduction, after four years, they revamped their software from what was SwiftPoint Driver to a SwiftPoint X1 control panel to make the UI so much more intuitive and easy to use for all users with the simple mode and offer a feature that, to my knowledge, only Razer and Logitech pioneered for a long time. That being auto game detection and auto profile swapping, which is one of the best convenient features ever. As shown through their diagram, they plan on releasing regular software updates to fine tune it for this year. And let me just say, they're exciting ones down the line. I will add, the updates have fixed the problem I initially had at the start, and are always checking up on the community for any reported issues, so the software is an aspect that SwiftPoint don't overlook with their products. So stay tuned for a showcase of the revamped software later in the video. Now let's start with the packaging. So if you decide to pick one of these up, here's briefly what comes in the box. The illustrious mouse itself with two adjustable tilt feet, two replaceable grip sizes for the trigger buttons and the fingertip buttons, two additional mouse feet that can lock out tilt gestures if undesired, a flight stick extender in particular for flight games or games that support flying, and finally the actually useful quick start guide that I took the liberty of reading for you to understand this mouse. Starting with the exterior of it, the majority of the mouse itself is made out of plastic alongside the thumb buttons, edge buttons, and fingertip buttons, which is what gives it its 117 gram weight. Along with rubber grips where your thumb and ring are finger set, and replacements for the trigger buttons and the fingertip buttons, which can be rotated if necessary. At the back of the mouse are the feet, made out of plastic and have PTFE feet, and magnets at the back to help it snap into place. With the tiltable feet, they can be adjusted to make the tilting more easy by placing them more inwards, or harder by placing them more outwards, or even in the center for the best of both worlds. Also located here are seven screws in case you need to open it up to inspect it. If you're wondering what mouse switches it uses, they are kale switches rated at a lifespan of 20 million clicks. So not exactly the best one compared to say Omron switches, which are actually on the tracer, or Razer optical switches. It has a 1000Hz pulling rate, which is configurable and features the Pixar PMW 3360 optical sensor that can reach up to 12,000 dpi, which is enough for gaming. It features a 1.8 meter braided cable, which feels great and is tangle free, 
It has one RGB spot at the hump, which I use to help indicate the current profile. The scroll wheel has a nice rubber tactile feel to it, and features an OLED screen that can display a variety of options and enables you to configure certain settings on the fly by going into a config mode. It is actually cleverly programmed so that it won't enter config mode unless tilted to the right. Pretty slick in advance. When in config mode, you can pull up the left trigger to change what is displayed to reflect a custom message, the current DPI, current profile, declick forces, tilt angles, animated cube, or firmware version. You can use the scroll wheel to change the current DPI, or click the rear edge button to access the onboard profile stored on the mouse's flash memory. Now moving on to the interior, because of how packed this mouse is, literally, I want to give a brief summary of its main internal features explaining what they are and how they function during my experience, so you can understand how they could be used in a practical way, starting with the D-click feature, then the tactile feedback plus accelerometer, and finally the gyroscope and the tilt and pivot gestures. The four sensors on this mouse is what enables the D-click feature, allowing you to access and assign multiple keystrokes within one of the five buttons found on the left-click button, the right click button, the middle mouse button, the left fingertip button, and the right fingertip button. This feature, if you're unaware, can also be found on keyboards like from another small company, wink wink, like Wooting, except they call this feature DKS or Dynamic Keystroke, which does the exact same thing. The mouse can track how deep you press one of the five buttons and can actuate a total of four keystrokes within one mouse click at any force levels you choose to set them at. But, I must warn you that the response will differ depending on where exactly it is pressed. So for example, the left and right buttons, specifically in the center of them, are calibrated to reach 100%, while moving outwards to the nose of the mouse, it can be really inconsistent to reach 100%, which is why it is best to use it in tangent with the accelerometer to give you tactile feedback and indicate when you have reached that force level or not. But don't worry, there are plans to reach to release a full force calibration wizard into the software in the future. Be on the lookout my SwiftPoint brethren. At the same time, you can use the D-click feature in an analog mode, so I'd say 10% you will generate a small output, but when you reach 90% you will generate a bigger output, which is a such a cool unique feature on analog mouses. On their promo video and website, they say it will be useful for driving, flying, or running games. These two features are in a sense inseparable, otherwise you'll have to look at the force level indicator on the OLED screen every time, or just rely on muscle memory. But anyways, during my time with the Z, here are some examples I could come up with with what games I have at the moment. In Battlefield 1, I utilized D-Click by binding certain actions together to access them all in one button. So by pressing down the left button by 30%, I could knife people up close without reaching for the melee key. And pressing down the right button by 10% allowed me to auto breathe in before taking the shot without consciously having to press the shift key. Another example I found very interesting was in Minecraft Combat, and I don't have much to really describe about this involving the repeat option, so I'll just let the video speak for itself. tactile feedback, the accelerometer is what enables the mouse to have tactile feedback, giving you that indication when you're clicked or pressed down with a certain force level. By default, when you set up a profile, there will be no auto tactile feedback generated. What you will need to do is go into the expo mode in the software, choose a button tilt or pivot motion, and add it to any of them by choosing the vibration option. When added in, you can choose to have it activate before the action, after, or both. There is no limit. It can be configured to output a subtle or noticeable feedback from 10% to 120%, and the duration of the feedback can last up to 10 full seconds, or for as quick as 0.07 seconds. This can seem jarring, for the, but for the most part, putting it before the key press is preferred. The gyroscope on this mouse is what enables the tilt and pivot gestures to sense its orientation and position, and measure the current angle and velocity. To pivot, it must be in tangent with another button, like for example, mouse button 4 plus pivot left will equal G. 
Through the software, you can again assign a multitude of keystrokes at variable angles at about 180 degrees either tilting left, right, forward or back and of course provide tactile feedback when you reach those angles. I found that the sweet spot for analog tilt angles are around 7.5 degrees left and right and 4 degrees forward and back. Back to valve code 1, with all the various key binds to assign, I utilize tilting by binding crouch to left tilt and prone to right tilt and binding forward tilt for auto bayonet charging and back tilt to put on gas mass. And in GTA 5, I'm buying it sneaking with right tilt. Just a few examples I experimented with. What ideas can you come up with for your respected favorite game? And just for fun, to put into context just how many keystrokes you can actuate with just your right hand, considering the use of sub profiles, you having access to 13 buttons without deep click, and tying it with the amount of gestures you can do, tilt left, right, forward, back, and pivot left and right, you will have 91 buttons at your disposal. With deep click, it increases to 161 buttons. So eat your heart out, mouses that pack 12 buttons on the side. I'm looking at you, Razor Naga and Corsair Scimitar. Now, considering that I bought this mouse in 2021 and not back in 2017, I can't say anything about what the old software was like or if it, that was even good because I didn't know about this mouse until now. But what I can say about this new revamped software and looking at old screenshots of the old software and coming from the Razor of Naga Trinity with Synapse, I can say without a shadow of doubt that this software coming from a little tech company is anything but bloatware and useless. What this software allows me to do is bind all the essential keys and let me prefacize, retain complete freedom of movement. No longer do you have to sacrifice not being able to move right just to hit the R key to reload your gun or press the left control to crouch or sneak, you can do everything with just your right hand. Now without going into so much detail about every little thing, I'll just highlight some of its best features. Starting with what you'll see in simple mode, with the plus button at the top right hand corner, you can add your own profiles and add it to its respective application. And not just games, but other applications like I did with Adobe Premiere Pro. So a limitless range of profiles to set up, and you can even choose from one of the pre-made profiles by swift point just under it to add to your profile library if you have any of them already installed. And at the top on the left is where you can set it to auto profile swap or manually swap if you so desire. In the middle here is where the key bindings begin. You can change your independent DPI level and set multiple levels if you need to swap to them on the fly. Within the five pressure sensitive buttons, say the left click button, you can add and configure the D-click force levels from 10% to 99% adding anything from mouse, keyboard, media controls, joystick controls, mouse settings like change DPI level or current profile, or window shortcuts. And this goes for every button and gesture on this mouse. You can even rename them to whatever you want to if so desired. On the bottom left corner you can save the current mapping to the onboard flash memory and take it with you to another PC that doesn't require the software. So points for transportability. Also here is the expo mode, accessible to the Z-mouse and not the tracer, which is where the magic happens. You can have advanced setups with the tactile feedback, tilt and pivot gestures, set up sub-profiles to add in different layers within one profile, and set up the Z to be recognized as a joystick. In GTA 5, I utilize sub-profiles by creating a weapon sub-profile, binding the keys associated with certain weapons, and utilize forward and back tilt to access the weapon wheel. By no means it's practical, but it's interesting nonetheless. In the top left hand corner, there is an option to both export and import .spcf profiles. There is a site run by SwiftPoint to download, upload profiles and engage with the community, however it has been confirmed that it will eventually be shut down and deleted, for they are in the process of migrating the existing community to their help desk community forms for better support and communication. So a place to upload and download custom profiles will be, will be left in limbo, but I can confirm uh, happily that eventually the help desk will have a section to upload profiles. So that will be something, something to wait in anticipation for. If you have any troubles, you can always look through the online user's guide at SwiftPoint's help desk site, or contact the reliable SwiftPoint support staff directly in the community tab. 
I am always there for any news. These are just highlights to the software and I've yet to get real complex with it. Just need a bit of time to adjust personally. Now although I praise this mouse a lot, I'm not blind to any negatives I found when testing this mouse. To start with, on the comparison shot that compares the Tracer and the Z mouse, it says long life PTFE feet. However, to clarify that, they are not 100% version PTFE feet when I received it. It's a little misleading, especially since on the official Swiftpoint Z mouse YouTube video, the, I guess, prototype version had 100% version PTFE feet, which I guess they removed by the time of its release for cost efficient reasons, maybe? I don't know. Additionally, it also featured that mouse with a detachable cable that I wish they kept simply because of how convenient they are, especially when looking at today's contemporary mouses. Just something hysterical to point out also in their promo video on the Z, they mentioned We know that gamers don't want to worry about batteries or wireless reliability and latency. Implying that wireless functionality is unreliable and they didn't have it in mind at one point. Although it's quite ironic when you look at the current marketplace trend on gaming mices. Though, I gra though granted I doubt they could have predicted that. I do wonder how they feel about it. Also during my testing, the middle mouse button had inconsistent de-click force actuation points. On off-center key presses, it is smoother and works fine, while on center key presses, it seems to always actuate at about 25% force every time. And tilting can be a bit finicky too, sometimes it can activate unintentionally, especially when using it with the flight extender. Though when using tilt, noise level being in line with the angle allevi helps alleviate most inconsistencies. So through trial and error, I was, I guess, able to solve it. Another con to this mouse is that it only supports direct input and currently does not support X input. To briefly explain what I mean by this, direct input and X input are essentially both application programming interfaces, or API, that allows applications to receive input from a joystick or an Xbox controller for Windows. So within the software, in the profile settings, there is a setting called Game Controller Type, and this is what allows the mouse to be recognized as a joystick with the gyroscope. However, in it, the only options are joystick or none, showing that the mouse will only be recognized as a joystick, aka direct input, and not as a controller or Xbox controller, aka X input, meaning that the usage of analog input in games will be limited to direct input, and only games that support direct input can the Z mouse be fully utilized. The only game that I had at my disposal to try this out was Battlefield 1, specifically with flying planes. The setting up part wasn't all that difficult, but when it all came together, my god, I was doing it guys, I was flying a plane with a mouse and keyboard. The big problem with direct input is that so little modern games out there support it, considering that it is an old API and X input was designed to be a replacement for it. However, I can confirm from, forgive me, Bryce Maisie, a Swiftpoint support member, that X input is, quote, still on the table for the Z, but just not anytime soon, which I'm excited for when it arrives, even though the whole analog input in games varies greatly. Like for some it works flawlessly, and others may have restrictions like not allowing simultaneous input for mouse and joystick, but that's just the current state of analog gaming on PC. Hopefully the word spreads out about this unappreciated feature so that future games on PC will have compatibility for this. In the end, all I can say is that if Swiftpoint ever decides to make a V2 of this mouse, I hope modern features like these make it into that one. So to wrap things up, it all comes down to muscle memory and readjusting your knowledge of mices. This mouse has seriously changed my perspective about mouses, about what they're capable of, throwing my muscle memory of mouses out the window, and it's taken me a good month just to get a comfortable footing with it. Yes, it may sound like hard work just to bind everything in muscle memory, but if you want a competitive advantage or just a multifunctional device all in your right hand, then it is so worth it. This is the mouse that will deliver on that. And for 149 US dollars with a, with a company that pushes the boundaries and challenges the status quo, you know you'll be supporting a team that pushes innovation and quality over quantity. Thank you people who have stuck with me this far in the video and hope to see you again in the next video where I tackle my final setup peripheral, a certain routing keyboard. See you then.